I'm Jenny Bruski. When I'm not listening to ghost stories, I love giving new life to items that others may think of as junk. From mantles to furniture to entire rooms, I take what may have been forgotten and make it better than ever before. These are my projects. And this is Junkin' with Jenny. up to episode number two we are of junkin with jenny and uh hi we're, we're both here today how are you <laughs> hi uh this is the show uh that's all about uh, basically taking what some may consider junk and giving it new life we want to help you do just that with the items and spaces that you have if you'd like uh, one of them uh featured on the show we're on some advice from jenny on the show submit a picture of them to us or your space uh, to us on our website junkinwithjenny.com we may feature it on a future episode of the program and on today's episode uh we have a listener that's sick of their dated yellow oak cabinets they want to know what can be done to give them a little bit of new life also uh, we'll take a uh, your date book essentially beyond your phone and uh, make a room defining chalkboard calendar and uh, share and keep the whole family on track. Also, how to give your floors a high-end look with a not-so-high-end budget. Uh, we'll talk about uh, the peel and stick uh, uh, vinyl tile, essentially. Yes. Is that, that, that all of it? Is this all vinyl that we're talking about? Or is one or... No, it's all vinyl. They're just slightly different in, in mm-hmm. what they do. And, and they actually call this vinyl plank. Okay, vinyl plank. So we'll talk about all that. Uh, plus, we will also be uh, taking a letter from a listener that uh, needs some ideas on how to give new life to some old doors, something that we've recently done here ourselves. We love our old doors. We do, and we've done some really neat things for them. So we'll be talking about uh, all that uh, here in today's episode of Junkin' with Jenny. Uh, let's go over to our first letter that comes in. It uh, comes in from Lauren, and Lauren says, I love my kitchen... But uh, I need to, I, I hate it at the same time. I need some advice. The layout works perfect for me. And my cabinets, cabinets are well built, built. They're strong. I hate how they look, though. I think a lot of people are in this. Sure. This boat where you, especially if you're, you bought like, not necessarily a fixer upper, but you bought a, a home that had a previous tenant mm-hmm. or two, maybe a home built in the 90s. Well built, but yeah, that yellow oak's kind of done. Uh, they're yellow oak, super popular in the 90s. I really would like to give them an update without having to give it get all new cabinets. What ideas do you have for me? Well, I know exactly what I would recommend. Yeah. And bear with me because a lot of people kind of scoff at this idea, but I've actually done it and it worked out and held up well. Okay. It's chalk paint. Da-da-da! Not chalkboard paint, like where you paint on the wall, and we'll talk about later, but chalk paint. Mm-hmm. And I'm, I'm sure a lot of our listeners are familiar with it, but it's a paint that's basically been mixed to a certain degree with plaster of Paris and has been thickened. Mm-hmm. And it's designed for painting furniture. You can paint cabinetry with it. The great thing about it is you do not have to prime. You don't have to sand. Mm-hmm. So that's the part that everybody dreads when they think of repainting their kitchen cabinets. So I'm going to put up a picture here of basically the what we had we did have yellow oak cabinets right and we sat there with them we're like these are really almost the same boat oh they were great cabinets yeah as lauren is in here and we're just kind of like well what you know what do we do i mean we don't want to have to do all new cabinets that's insanely expensive and and it's it's a waste too you know i mean i feel like that when when you have something that's really a decent product and you have to just knock it out because you don't necessarily like the look of it. I know. I see that on home shows so much. I'm like, wait, you could chalk paint those. (laughs) There there, there is. There's so many ways of of giving these things new life. And even sometimes, too, I mean, because cabinets are not necessarily cheap, even if they're not, like, super great quality. Mm -hmm. But if if they appear to be. Right. (laughs) Kind of, you know, like the, I don't want to say faux, but it is kind of a faux look. Maybe it's got really good doors. Mm -hmm. The the body itself, it functions. It's not the highest grade. You know, you know. You can squeeze some few, few more years out of it. I have news for you. Your plates don't care. Yeah, your plates don't care. Your Nobody cups don't care. goes and opens your cabinets and goes, oh, yeah. those aren't real. You're not going to have the dinner party and no. people are like, <laughs> hey, well, I'm glad you invited me over. Thanks. Uh, we, we really appreciate it. We're excited about uh, being here. But uh, wait a second. Let me take a look. I don't think you have adequate cabinetry. Right. They're not going to be like, we're leaving. I don't care. We'll never be friends again. 
Yeah, no. that doesn't really happen. No. That'd be really interesting if it did, though. Would you stay friends with someone like that? No, I would not stay friends with somebody like that. How would you deal with that? Like, what if you were working with someone like that, and then you, like, had to see him at work? <laughs> I've like, had to work with people like that. Really? In my line of work, I've had to work with people like that. They were complete, um, I guess, <laughs> home-finishing snobs. Okay. They were. Were they dissed cabinetry? Cabinetry. You didn't have real marble. Okay. Crap like that. So it was just really. It's so. like, sorry, I live in my house. Sure, sure. So anyway, uh, this this what the the chalk painting. Yes. Can be done to doesn't have to be high end cabinetry. Right. It can be literally any sort of cabinetry. Um, and and I want to show you. Here, here's what we did. This is uh, the the before and after. Let me. I'm going to put up the before and uh, one of the afters at the same time, so you can see what this looks like. Uh, before and after and this is on the screen now the old yellow oak and this is the uh, the after of this I'll make it a little bit bigger so you can see exactly what we're talking about and if you're listening on the podcast uh, on iTunes um, we have a video version of this podcast on our website at junkinwithjenny.com so you can see everything we're talking about here um, it, it's really important to, to see some of this but uh, it, it's it's amazing what that chalk paint can do so for the listeners, though, that are just listening, yeah. maybe they're going to work or something, um, we painted our cabinets that we took them from the yellow oak mm -hmm. to an off-white color. And then I love heavily distressed things because I have such a perfectionistic personality that if it's already messed up, I'm not going to notice it being more messed up. Mm -hmm. But if it's perfect, I'm going to notice every ding and scratch. Sure. So I distress things just to put my mind at ease. And I took the cabinets, heavily distressed them on the places you would normally find wear and tear, around the knob, you know, the edges, places like that, and really showed some of that oak through it, but not to where it just overwhelmed the kitchen and made it dark anymore. Mm -hmm. Really, really lightened up the kitchen. And I do have to say, in some of the images that we're showing, the contrast is very high on it. So they do look a little bit darker than I think they actually were yeah. in, in real life. But you could get this look, depending on how distressed you want them to look. Sure. You could go as as, as dark as the distress looks on this. Um, but I love those cabinets. And it, what was the process, though, of going through and, and achieving this look? Well, you want to do two coats of paint. The first coat of paint, you're going to be like, oh, my God, what did I do? I've just ruined a cabinet door. Bear with it. Let it dry. Mm -hmm. It only takes about an hour to dry before you can add the second coat. Add the second coat. Then it's completely covered. If you have some really dark cabinets, then do a third coat. But I only did the two coats with distressing. Mm -hmm. And then you can distress two different ways. Um, if you can take your doors outside use a sanding block and rub away what you don't want on your door so that the old door shows through. Um, the other thing that I've learned since we did this, and I wish I'd known at the time, is if you take a wet kind of a heavy textured towel, you can rub with the wet towel on the door and it will wipe off the chalk paint layers where you want it. And you have no dust and you have no mess that way. Uh, you just have your, you know, residue on the towel mm -hmm. so once you get your cabinet doors distressed the way you want you can either wax them which is a lot of work and it, it does do a finish on the cabinet door that will hold up but i with little kids i used polycrylic i use minwax polycrylic on most everything to really put a hard coat on there mm -hmm. and it seals it you can do two coats. You can apply a coat a year later if you need to, if you find touch-ups that are needing to be done. But I do a coat of polycrylic in it and call it done. And I, they looked great. I, I thought they really did turn out well. As far as timetable goes to do a project like this, what, I, I, what would you say realistically? Could it be done in a weekend if you really sat there and, and wanted to do it? Would it take longer? I mean, what sort of steps are we talking about here to get this done? If you have a spouse that's willing to help, I think the two of you <laughs> can get it done in a weekend. Um, it's not that you weren't willing to help, and you did help at the end, but mm -hmm. I started the process in the winter in Kansas with nothing to do outside, mm -hmm. and I kind of drug it out, and I took most of January into February because I was doing, my goal was to do a door in the base mm -hmm. one a day. Sure. And um, I really drug it out and took too long to where I just got sick of the whole process. <laughs> but if you, you know, broke it down into a system, took the doors off, numbered them where they go, 
you could easily get it done in a weekend. And, you you know, if you don't want a distressed look, you don't have to distress the chalk paint. You can get a very finished look with uh, using a roller in the chalk paint and not distressing at all. And that will really speed up your process as well. And just leave it at the chalk level without, without the distressing. Without the distressing, yeah. but do coat it. Yes. Because the coat is what protects it from spaghetti sauce handprints mm -hmm. all the above otherwise you're gonna have a very uh distressed in the wrong way uh yes. looking uh cabinetry with oh hey look there's pesto from the other night uh, right or a year ago that we can never get off the uh the cabinetry right so sealing it is uh very important so there you go there's some ideas on how to uh to make those cabinets uh a bit better uh, or, or update them without having to do all new cabinetry i mean the the product that we we use we're talking i mean where would you where would you get it at you can get chalk paint at any of your big box stores now. Mm -hmm. um, we are fortunate enough to live in an area where they have we have Menards, mm -hmm. and Dutch Boy makes a version of chalk paint that I love, and it's twenty bucks for a quart, but a quart goes a long way. I think I used maybe four or five quarts on our entire kitchen, mm -hmm. so I really highly recommend that one. But the Rust-Oleum chalk paint I've started using recently because it's at a store that's closer to me. I also really like it's a little bit thinner, mm -hmm. but um, I find it it distresses very well. And not all chalk paint paint is created equal. I should stress that. No, some some is more of the texture of regular paint, mm -hmm. and then some you can take it out with a spoon, and it like blobs. It's it's you know very thick. Mm -hmm. It's it's like the consistency of pudding. Yeah, and sometimes if if you're actually extra hungry, it's not bad with a little bit of. Hershey syrup in there. I don't recommend that. I, at I all. would never do that. No, <laughs> you can't eat chalk paint. You can't no. do that. Uh, but uh, it is, it's one of those things where if you buy it and you're not real satisfied with the one that you get, I would say try another one. Right. Keep try, trying. Yeah, try another one after that because I think you've tried. I mean, how many brands of chalk paint have you tried? At least five. Sure. Um, I've tried some very high end brands mm -hmm. and I've honestly found they don't work much better than the ones i get at the store sure uh, th they're the cheaper ones right okay. the, the only advantage i found to those where there was colors available there were colors available mm -hmm. that weren't available at some of the other stores but if you're going pretty neutral you're going to be good to go with a big box store okay well there you go there's some ideas you don't always have to go for the super high-end product to make it uh, to make it work well no so there you go all right hope that uh, that helped out if you have a question if you want some advice on something you can always write in on our website at junkinwithjenny.com and uh, even submit your image we would love to hear from you and uh, give some feedback uh, possibly here on the show the next thing we're going to talk about is a project that uh, we've now done in two different places uh and it really has worked out well. I'm putting up the image on the screen right now, and what you're seeing there is uh, our, our first chalkboard calendar. And, and, mm -hmm. what I, and what I want to stress the difference here, because uh, we, we were just talking about chalk paint. Right. There's chalk paint, and there's chalkboard paint. That's correct. Two totally different things. Right. Chalkboard paint mm -hmm. gives you the old chalkboards like we had in school. But chalk paint obviously does not. Yeah, it's not <laughs> the same right. thing. So uh, it's uh, it's a really cool product, and I know a lot of folks have seen it out there, and there's a lot of variations on it now. Uh, everything from, uh, like, the, I know they have like in spray paint now. I don't think we've tried. Sure. Have we tried the spray paint version of this we, product yet? We have not, because our okay. projects have been too large for spray paint. But uh, they do sell it, like, in the cans, and that's what we've, we've used. And, yeah. uh, and a quart, you know, goes a long way. Right. Does it not? It does. I mean, a, a quart, of the, what I'm showing here is, is the image of, of our first uh, chalkboard, and they're really both pretty close to the same size. Um, as far as uh, how much you'd need for this, about a quart, right, for a si thing this size? Not even. Not even? Okay. Like a third of a quart. Okay. So you have plenty left over. You don't need to do the whole gallon of it. Right. And and we did another one, too, and here's the uh, the other one that we we did it. We kind of accented. Uh, we, we had accents on both the, both of the letters. They were both metal. Just one's a little bit bigger than the other. Mm -hmm. But this stuff, this calendar, has proved to be so useful. Uh -huh. Just in our life and in our house. I mean, everybody has a calendar on their phone and reminders and all that. But I get so many darn reminders in my phone. Half the time, I'm just like delete. I don't even look at it because mm -hmm. it's just blue, blue, blue reminder update and sure. you know the the push updates and all that having this thing has been really helpful for family stuff and especially the kids uh so they can see it now that uh, at least one of them can read 
one can read. You can do pictures in a right. can. Yes. And we do <laughs> yes. Christmas trees and pumpkins and fireworks. Exactly. So the process on this was really uh, kind of simple. What we we had in the uh, the last house was essentially this this framed in. <laughs> uh, wallpaper picture right it was a wallpaper and mural mm -hmm. and when we toured the house we just assumed it was a large piece of art mm -hmm. when we bought the house and got the keys and went to move our stuff in this large piece of art was still on our kitchen wall yeah. and it was not our taste <laughs> at all and then we realized oh this is wallpaper and they have framed around it with trim so it stayed for a few years. <laughs> the trim was there. Yeah. The wallpaper was there. It's like, well, what do you what do you do? I mean, it, we, we could rip it down, but it's going to require kind of redoing that whole wall then at some point. It would have, but we just kind of went the lazy route, which worked out best. Mm -hmm. And we got a can of chalkboard paint, taped off the trim, painted it black chalkboard, and then just made a grid, you know, evenly spaced for seven days. Mm -hmm. And then I think I allow for six weeks so that, you know, you've got those months where there's like one day at the end and mm -hmm. the first week and one day in the very last week. But um, just measure it off. And then I use a permanent white marker mm -hmm. and I draw the lines on. For the lines. For the lines. That's important to, to, to mention because I, I think, didn't we originally try to do the permanent marker? Or not permanent marker, but the uh, the chalk marker. Oh gosh! Wh which is supposed to be a yeah. a product that is wipeable and and clearable, just like a regular piece of chalk. Oh no, not so much on this product. Not on the chalkboard paint no. on a wall. Um, maybe it works on real chalkboards yeah. much better, or the Starbucks boards, sure. but not on this because we had dance lessons i think you know far beyond kids being in dance lessons just because yeah. it wouldn't come off you could still read it it was one of those things where it, it your first round of it looks lovely mm -hmm. it's like oh this 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 chalk uh marker is great it, it's so clear it, it it writes much better than just a piece of chalk right. but it never comes off and i think we actually had to repaint the chalk on it the, we did. the, the chalk board to to get it to eventually recover so for the lines your actual lines Use a permanent white marker. Okay, not not just a chalk marker. Or a paint marker. Okay. Then, when you're actually writing your events down, your dates, all of that, go back to the old school Old school chalk. chalk. Okay. And if your squares are big enough, you have no problem mm -hmm. writing out. You sure. know, if you've got tiny squares, it might be kind of difficult because the letters are going to be hard to read. But mm -hmm. our squares are what? Probably eight by eight. I'd say around there, yeah. Yeah. We have a fairly large calendar in, in this house. I think it's even bigger than the last mm -hmm. house. And there's lots of ways to frame these things out, as you can see on the image that's on the screen right now. Uh, we like we uh, said in the, the first house, it was literally uh, like it was like a floor. Uh, it's floor trim. Floor trim. trim. Yeah, mm -hmm. that was essentially put into a square. Uh, the next one we did, we did kind of more of a, a farmhouse like style window trim. Right. That we just, trim. Yeah, we just did it ourselves with just some wood. Um, so there's all different ways. So whatever your style is for framing it, you know, frame it out somehow. Uh, but it, it's very easy to do. This is something that really, if you you have your mindset on what you're going to do, mm -hmm. know your space, uh, have your product ready to go, you can get this thing done in a couple hours. Oh, yeah. And you can find the letters like that, all different styles of letters that fit. Um, I think I got mine at a craft store, but I'm sure Amazon has them. There's a lot of good, really good craft websites for getting things pretty inexpensively, too. Mm -hmm. It was funny when we sold the last house, the people wrote into the contract they wanted that chalkboard. <laughs> we were like, well, it's not going with us. Guess it's what? Stuck on the wall. You don't have a choice. Right. This is going to be yours whether you want it or not. I'm glad they loved it so much. I'm glad it wasn't <laughs> like you must take the chalkboard with you because it would have been like, um, that's going to be a bit of a problem. Yeah. It doesn't go with it. Um, so there you go. Some ways to, uh, to do kind of a, a fun uh, at home uh, chalkboard, right. uh, a chalkboard calendar. So that's uh, one of the cool things that uh, that we've done recently, or in two different places, really. Yeah. So, uh, again, if you want to uh, have your uh, item, your room uh, analyzed, get some feedback on it uh, on the program, junkinwithjenny.com is the website to go to to do just that. And we would uh, we'd love to talk about. Uh, what you got going on and give you some uh, some ideas. April writes into us, I've uh, just uh, removed more old and smelly carpet than I ever care to see for the rest of my life from my home. 
I'm now stuck with trying to figure out what to put down next. I love the uh, look of uh, wood and tile, but I don't really have a budget to get the product that I want. Plus, I like to change things up quite often, so I don't want to be stuck with the same look for the next 30 years. Any ideas on what I can do without taking out a loan? Jenny? I have it. You have it. It's vinyl plank. Okay. We, we've talked about this a little bit on the show. We have. And I will probably end up sounding like a broken record over the course of Junkin' with Jenny uh-huh. because it's my favorite product because it looks like real wood when it's down, mm-hmm. but it's something you can install yourself with very little effort and it holds up really, really well to spills, kids, dogs, whatever. Mm-hmm. And it's really inexpensive. It also holds up really well uh, for the most part, within reason, to dragging things on it. We found that out. Yeah. yeah. I mean, they're, 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 everything has a limit. Some some brands do better with that yeah. than others, depending on how thick the tile is. Mm-hmm. We've been remodeling our basement for the show and uh, doing all of the work ourselves. And so we've been dragging furniture, building walls, mm-hmm. sheetrocking, doing all these things with the floors already down because yeah. it was not a remodel we were planning on doing. It just kind of one day we decided this doesn't work. Yeah. Let's start over. Um, so the floors we weren't planning on changing and I just got done scraping all the excess paint and sheetrock mud and everything off of there. They look as good as the day I put them down. I think I have one plank out of the whole basement that needs to be redone. And Mm -hmm. that's not even from the remodel. That's from the other night when I dropped my wine glass and it shattered. It cut (laughs) It you damaged the, the floor with the wine glass? I did. I did. It withstood the remodel, but it did not withstand my drinking in the evening. It, so. uh, it withstood moving large furniture, a pool table, uh, countless pieces of plywood and sheetrock and... Two by fours. Two by fours yes. and arcade machine. And uh, <laughs> my God, but it couldn't stand up to your wine glass. It must have been... <laughs> Just just the right angle. And so I will warn you, if you drop glass on there and it shatters, it may cut the plank. But this is the danger. Yeah. Anyway, so it, it's really tough stuff. I mean, nobody drops glasses on a daily basis. It's not something to worry about. Well, not everyone does, but some people do that like to wear I've only certain done colors and patterns. Like twice, <laughs> twice in the last two weeks. I'm doing twice okay. Twice in the last week. Yeah. <laughs> I'm doing okay. <laughs> You really have to. I mean, because uh, uh, honestly, I kind of judge it by uh, the current line of wine glasses that we have. Yeah. And how frequent. And and the one that I have here, we still have, we still have both of these. Yeah. Both of these are still in existence. I think you just dropped the last of the. My favorite. The old one that yeah. we had, and uh, there you go. I'm really surprised that that broke it. That's what did it. Cut it. There you go. Well, anyway, I'm going to show uh, on the video here what you see is a really interesting pattern of because we're talking about tile and vinyl plank. And this is one of the patterns that we actually did uh, is a mixture of tile and vinyl plank. And it's a really cool looking. Uh, what would you call this? It's an inlay. Okay. It's, it's a tile inlay. Um, it's supposed to mimic the look of marble inlaid into wood, which you find and homes that can afford it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and we like the look. I, th- I wanted to really, um, is that the entryway the last time? I'm house? showing the entryway right now. Uh-huh. And uh, I've also showed the over by uh, where the, the bar is. Okay. Now. Yeah, just to set those areas apart as kind of different, um, we found a vinyl tile that's peel and stick that was the same thickness as our plank. And so, you know, the planks are three feet long. The tiles mm-hmm. are one feet. So you're you're working with even feet, mm-hmm. you know. So it was really easy to do. And you just start a pattern and you just go with it. And, and the great part about this whole thing is um, j- just how, you know, much versatility there is as far as getting it cut. It doesn't require a wet saw. It doesn't no. require uh, really any material other than a nice pair of sharp scissors. Sharp scissors. Yeah. I will say the, the tile, the square tile... Is a little tougher. A box mm-hmm. cutter is more handy with that and mm-hmm. a straight edge. But other than that, that's really all you need to do that project. And that kind of leads us to our next uh, letter that we got in here. It says, uh, it's from uh, Kara. Hey, guys, just wondering how you would go about cutting uh, mm-hmm. vinyl fl- uh, vinyl flooring planks around objects like a toilet or a sink. My husband and I will be buying a home this fall, and it looks like most houses still have outdated flooring that I'd most likely revamp. Also, is there a specific brand 
that you guys would recommend thanks. And I should specify, if we're going to talk about a brand, it's not an endorsement. They're not paying us. Uh, this is, will just be literally off the cuff of what we have experienced ourselves. It's, it's products we've actually used yeah. before we sure. even thought about doing the show. Yep. Um, what I have used to install all of our planks are a good pair of scissors. Like, mm -hmm. not gardening scissors, but heavy-duty scissors. Um, straight edge. And... That is actually about it. A box knife on um, the off the floor we did in my office, and mm -hmm. I'll show that plank. It's a little bit thicker. Um, if you can cut a straight line and score the plank and then snap it, that's all you have to do. Mm -hmm. Now, it is a little tricky, I will admit. My least favorite part of install is around toilets. I, I know you hate installing toilets, but I loved how... <laughs> I was able to put the floor down, and then you installed over it this we, time. Yeah, the actual toilet itself. But um, that is kind of a trial and error type thing. You you just kind of work on the angle, and you start with a little bit, cut a little bit more, and you, you work on it until you kind of get the right shape. Mm -hmm. And it may take you a few planks. I'm not going to lie. Um, if you find one that works, save it as a template for any other toilets. Most of the time, you need to caulk around the bottom of your toilet. Well, actually, all the time, you should mm -hmm. caulk around the bottom of your toilet. So when you put that flooring down, if it's not completely perfect, if it's less than a quarter of an inch, caulking's going to cover that, and you're good. Mm -hmm. So that that part, I scissors will cut it. It's just going to be trial and error unless sure. you can lift your toilet and then put the plank down and then put the toilet on top of it. Yeah, and, you know, I would say for for some of this, just with my experience, because I have laid a bit of it as well sure. um, in different parts of the house. You really did a lot of the technical stuff, like around toilets and stuff, so mm -hmm. I get where a scissors makes the most sense there because you kind of got to get, you know, weird eh, angles yeah. and edges. Um, but m I think it's a matter of preference when you're just laying it straight, mm -hmm. if you will, uh, you know, amongst square corners and walls and such or just next to other tiles. I liked the box cutter more than I liked the scissors. Okay. I thought I could put a, and maybe it's just one of those things where it's like I can physically put more pressure on it or something. Sure. Um, you know, I think it might be one of those things where, th so my preference was I could do a nice, I felt I could get a straighter line using the box cutter and, and a guide mm -hmm. versus doing the scissors. But it's a matter of preference, uh, sure. I think. Is, and uh, the scissors worked great for you. The box cutter worked great for me. But either or can work really well. I would say if you're going to start trying this and you've never done it before, have both handy and ready to go because you may discover one it, you you feel is 10 times better than the other mm -hmm. and then your spouse may feel the other is 10 times better than the other for them but it doesn't matter as long as the job gets done and we have time for me to share a couple of tips i've learned with putting this down sure one of the ways to have the most success with doing a vinyl plank is to make it look as much like a real wood floor as possible and mm -hmm. there's a couple of things that are no-nos when you're putting down a real wood floor okay one of which is you don't want two planks side by side to have a joint closer than six inches mm -hmm. so basically when you're putting your planks down you want to have at least six inches between what one plank stops and the plank above it either begins or ends mm -hmm. does that make sense i think so i'm gonna keep nodding my head yes okay um kind of like with a, a subway tile you want to have you know that staggered mm -hmm. look um, the other thing I found with doing this is if you get to the wall and you cut the plank to fit between your plank and the wall, your, your last plank in the wall, mm -hmm. put the factory edge, the part that you did not cut, towards the room mm -hmm. and always put the edge that you cut towards the wall because mm -hmm. that factory edge has just a little bit of a lip on it and there's no, you know, under layers that are showing, whereas it, the piece that you've cut will probably have a little bit of that showing. It won't be noticeable, but you're going to have a much more finished look if you do it that way. The, In other words, the factory cut it better than you did, no matter what. No matter what. Mm -hmm. So go with that yeah. uh, for the, the more visible area, uh, mm -hmm. if that's what you're, you're working with. Any other tips? That's da, about da, da, it. Da, 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 that's da. about it. The more you know. <laughs> do, 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 do. 
So there you go. There's some ideas on uh, how to uh, to make that uh, that work for you. And we're talking as far as you know, price of the stuff, square foot. I mean, some of it's like 99 cents. Yeah. Some even less if it's on sale. Can we talk about what we've used? Yeah. In fact, let's uh, let's go into that because the next segment we have here is actually uh, the review of okay. of this product uh, or of the many products that we've used. And uh, you have you have some of them right here. Do you want to show them, or you want me to show you, them? You the camera is on you. Okay. It's all I'm about. You, you have to do it kind of in the style of. Like the price is right, well, if you will. That's not going to happen. Yes, you got to hold it up there. You got to get it in front of you. Like this. And Well, yeah, a little bit more. Just kind of get... Like this. Yes, just like that. And you have okay. to like rub it slightly. No. And maybe lick the top of it. That's just <laughs> wrong. <laughs> anyway, for our not perverted listeners, um, this product is the one that we've done in the most recent house and it is 99 cents a square foot so because a plank's not a full square foot it's over a square foot you're running about two dollars a plank anyway it's um called driftwood it's by style selections at lowe's and i love this one it's got enough brown tones and gray tones it goes with just about any neutral wall color um literally have done thousands of square feet of this and um, it does not disappoint, has held up very well. Uh, I first did it in our last house in the basement. I did a different color, but mm -hmm. it was the same product. Did that, uh, gosh, five, six years ago. Mm -hmm. Or less. Or less, something like that. Anyway, it held up remarkably well. And uh, so we knew the w when we got our house here in Branson that we were going to do this in the entire house. And we did all of it ourselves. Yeah. And uh, hold it up to the camera so people can see it. I mean, and it doesn't have to be just that color. There's many of it or many variations in color well, of it. actually, style selections, I, I don't know how many they have online mm -hmm. in store. They usually have a woodland brown, which is a, a richer, darker brown. Mm -hmm. um, and they have this one. And I just love this one. And, and grays are still such a thing that if you've got gray walls, it works. If you're going back to beige, mm -hmm. beige, it works, you know. It's it's great, and the the other one here that we're actually going to be putting this one down into the office. I can hold it up over here. Okay. <sighs> Don't a little, little bit different in in <laughs> the way it's uh, it has like this little thing on it. Right. This one is not fully right. adhesive on the back. It has a what they call a grip strip on it. This is allure. Um, this, p this particular pattern is Pacific Pine, and it's found at Home Depot. It's a little bit more. It's about $1.98 a square foot. I tried it out in my office because I had no experience with this type of install. And literally, it's a floating floor. That mean it means it does not stick to the floor itself. You can go over kind of a rough floor or... Um, if you have concrete that's kind of cracking that you haven't been able to fix yet, this is a good option. Okay, you're really distracting me. Will you knock that off? Anyway. I'm just, I'm... So it, it does, the, the texture on here, it's, it's captivating me. <laughs> okay, so the gray part is an adhesive strip, and that literally just smacks on and it sticks to the next plank. Mm -hmm. And that's the, that's the way that the floor goes down is the planks stick together instead of sticking down to the floor. So it's, it's, it's kind of like a floating floor as opposed to the last one where the, the last one actually sticks to the ground. Mm -hmm. um, but this one, it is peel and stick to each other, but not necessarily to your floor. Right. But once you have enough of it down, it ain't coming up because it's essentially gravity and the, the walls and all that. Right. And it's a heavy product, so, you know, it, it lays very, very nicely. Um, I tried it in my office. You liked it so much. We're going to do it in your office. Mm -hmm. But uh, this one is a little bit thicker in actual thickness. We're still talking very thin compared to other flooring. You know, we're talking less than an eighth of an inch. But um, you may have some cuts that are a little bit tougher. You might have to use the box cutter versus the scissors on mm -hmm. some of those. Or as Harper would say, the scissors. The scissors. With a Z. So there you go. I'm excited about that. Yeah. I'm going to lay on it. I'm going to roll around on it. And I'll say the Allure line at Home Depot, they have a lot of different colors that you can go and see in store. So mm -hmm. there you go. There you go. That's... Uh, that's vinyl plank in various 
ways, shapes, and forms. It is. It is. All right. Uh, next uh, thing we're going to talk about today on uh, Junkie with Jenny is uh, something called repurposing. And we've done some repurposing. Uh, and we had a question about uh, how to do some repurposing on a specific uh, area. The uh, letter comes in from Nicole. It says, uh, there's a great architectural salvage store here in Cleveland. I love uh, spending hours wandering through it. Uh, on the top floor, they have literally thousands of old doors, uh, really good prices. I've always wanted to buy one and do something with it, but I'm not sure how to install a new door or if that would even work on my existing frames. Do you have any ideas on what I could do with an old door? Okay, with an old door, as beautiful as they are, they're difficult to work with. Mm -hmm. They're they're fussy. Um, but I love old doors. So I found different ways to use them without necessarily hanging them on hinges and expecting them to open and close the right way every time. Okay. Uh, what I have found is putting them on the barn door sliding hardware that's all the rage right now, that has been the, the best thing because you can adjust where that is hooked into the door. So if your door is out of square, and it doesn't have to be out of square much before it's going to give you trouble, but meaning it's not, it, it's, it's sagging on one side, it's not perfectly perpendicular at the corners, then uh, you can account for that and kind of adjust for it with the barn door hardware because you pick where you install that. Mm -hmm. So I, I, do you have a picture of my door? I have the picture of your door up right now. Okay. My door is not perfectly square, but I love the door. Mm -hmm. It was a Christmas gift from my wonderful in-laws. and The people who did it and made me. <laughs> yeah. Um, but anyway, it was, a, from that. it was a little bit out of square. <laughs> so with the barn door hardware, you know, we were able to hang it a little bit higher on one end than on the other. Not to where you notice it, but it slides mm -hmm. and it works well. And I love that thing. It, do, it doesn't close all the way, so you're not going to get complete privacy yeah. with any barn door that you do. But all I really needed was just to block sound coming from the opening of my office. Yeah, and it's really, it, it's neat, especially if you can take a, a door, you know, obviously, like she's talking about, she's got a salvage place to go to that mm -hmm. has a lot. And those, those places are awesome. Um, but it's even more, you know, special if you can get the door from your grandparents' house oh. or, or or some something, you know, a, of meaning and find a repurposed way of using it. Because I think a lot of times people go and, uh, you know, especially when someone passes, uh, you know, you're going through, who wants this? Who wants that? And there's so many pieces nobody wants. Yeah. Uh, you know, you don't want the the TV stand. Um, you don't want, you know, the stuff that, that's just out of date. Mm -hmm. And it's like, yeah, I remember seeing it, but it doesn't hold much meaning to me. And I don't want it in my house. Um, doors are neat. And, are. And, and, and especially if they have some character. And if it's from an older house, that's something that I think a lot of folks don't even think about. Uh, right. You know, when they're going through those those motions of, um, you know, who's claiming what uh, mm -hmm. to remember the loved ones by. Um, I, I wish I would have thought of some of that. But then also some of it's like I try and, you know, talk to the families like I want the door. We're not taking the door off. <laughs> you know? Sure. But but if you are the one in control of that mm -hmm. and you can easily just get a replacement door that the new owners have no, you know, uh, affection towards that are easily replaceable uh taking some of those pieces that are older i mean they're they're so well built and they can really i think sometimes hold more uh, you know more of a memory for you you know almost just going to the door into grandma's house or whatever it may be you sure. know walking through the door to the den or what you know things like that can i think hold a lot more uh you know special places in our hearts when we're, we're trying to you know, think about those memories of, of the keepsakes that we have than just, uh, you know, uh, the spoon collection or something like that. Yeah. So uh, something to think about uh, when, when you're, uh, if you're in that situation. Because um, there's so many neat things you can do with the doors. And, and the, the barn door hardware now, that used to be something where, I believe the first time we did barn doors, we had to like <laughs> literally go to the farm supply store. We did, and what we did with those barn doors was we had half windows in our basement at the last house. And I don't have the pictures of that available right now, but I, I can on a future episode. Can I talk about it? Talk about it, sure. Okay, and so we wanted something that um, we could slide closed, not mm -hmm. only for privacy, but also in Kansas. You never know when you're going to have something 
like a storm come up and blow something through your window. So we wanted something that we could actually kind of secure the windows with. And sure. we thought, well, let's make some barn doors that will slide open and close. Mm-hmm. And it worked great. The problem is, the problem was at the time, you know, everybody started seeing barn doors on HGTV. Well, the prices for the black hardware that everybody wanted was four or five hundred dollars. Mm-hmm. And when you're talking about doing two at a time, not really feasible. No, you're talking literally like, you know, almost a thousand dollars to do it. Just a, in a, hardware. Yeah, not even the door. No. So we went to the tractor supply store and we bought old not old, but regular old hardware for an actual barn door. Mm-hmm. I think it was like maybe a hundred dollars in hardware. No, it was more than that. It was. These were not cheap. No, okay. I mean, e- even uh, even uh, that, and that's kind of my point here, is uh, e- even that hardware mm-hmm. was quite expensive. Okay. For for what it was, I think we were walking under like at least three hundred dollars in uh, for the the rail because we had we did two of them. Right, the we, rails and the trolleys. We had two rails, the trolleys. And at that time, I don't know what it is now, but uh, but it was heavy duty because literally this was made for a barn. Right. Um, so, I mean, I understand where, you know, it probably, you know, garnered that price because of the quality of what it was and the how hard, uh, how, what much it had to stand up to. But uh, it, it wasn't a, a cheap uh thing at that moment in time but now um if you go into your home depot your lowe's your menards uh it's kind of like a normal thing it is you can find you know on the high end at the big box stores i found 150 Mm dollars and this will fit a regular door opening Mm -hmm. usual door opening up to 36 inches 80 inches tall yeah and that's all you need right I mean, right. you don't necessarily need the uh, industrial. We're going to, I mean, and I'm sure this probably wouldn't hang a physical barn door on. No, but it'll hang a regular yep. door. And that's all you need if and that's what you're doing. Yeah, and we're getting ready to do one with the basement remodel, and I'm getting it at Menards, and the hardware is $89. Sure. So there's there's lots of places to get this stuff for a realistic price. You don't necessarily need to uh, go to the, the farm supply store to, to get the barn door hardware anymore because it's existing. And they even like sell the doors uh, in a lot of places they now do. too that are specifically for this because it's become such a thing. Right. You can you can put a regular slab door mm-hmm. on the hardware and it works just fine, but they've come up with, you know, some more rustic or more modern, you know, depending on your taste, mm-hmm. doors that are options for you that, you know, they actually have at the hardware stores that you can just take home with the hardware and, sure. and you're done. Sure. Another thing that we've done uh, in terms of uh, architectural savage, sa- savage, architectural it's savage, savage. Uh, salvage uh, <clears throat> on doors uh, is uh, a screen door. And that's a lot easier, I would say, to hang than, uh, and you probably have a lot more leeway than you would on uh, necessarily a, a, a physical door. Yes. Wh- where, or a physical indoor door door mm-hmm. uh, where trying to get it into the frame correctly, there's a little more forgiveness with the screen door. There is, just because the nature of it, it is a little more, you know, flimsy, if you mm-hmm. will, so you can kind of secure it to fit better. Um, there's hardware for old ones. It's called a turnbuckle. It's If you're showing the picture of our screen door, it's that silver diagonal thing in the bottom. And over time, the weight of the screen door on the side opposite of the hinges will start to sag just because of, you know, the weight of the wood. Mm -hmm. And so you turn that turnbuckle and it tightens it up and it starts to pull it back towards the hinge side of the door Mm -hmm. and kind of, you know, realigns it and gets it lifted up so it won't start dragging on the floor. Mm -hmm. And what I really love about these the screen doors is a lot of them are readily available at antique stores. Some look beat to hell. Mm-hmm. Um, what would you say, you know, someone who's doing just that, they're trying to find something like a screen door for their home at some place in it, um, but they're kind of scared of the idea of these old, you know, and they're fairly thin wood. Mm-hmm. What should you be looking for? What should you be looking out for? as well when trying to find one that will will work because keep in mind screen doors boom when you think of screen door you think of the slam yeah of the screen door right so if you're going to be getting an older screen door Mm -hmm. uh and you want to repurpose it i mean you can make anything look pretty sure uh especially things that are just going to be hanging somewhere and not getting much use but screen doors they're going to get used they're going to get abused Mm -hmm. uh 
what would work, what would not work when you're looking for these things? Well, stand it up. If you find it at an antique store, a flea market, whatever, stand it up and make sure it's not wobbly from the get-go. If it is wobbly, take a look and see, is it wobbly at the joints or is it just, you know, is the wood starting to rot? Because these things have been exposed to the elements sometimes for, you know, 100 years, sometimes decades. It's, it just depends on how old the door is. So, first of all, you want to make sure it's going to stand up on its own and it's not too wonky and, you know, cattywampus. And you want to see, is it pretty square? If it's not completely square, you can work with it. But mm -hmm. if it's, you know, completely, <laughs> it's more of a rhombus than a rectangle, mm -hmm. then that might be one to pass on. Sure. And, and also just the wood itself. The wood, you need to make sure that if it's been painted, and it looks like it's got several layers of paint, it's probably still good to go because the paint's what's protecting the wood. Mm -hmm. If it hasn't been painted, you got to check out, make sure it's not rotted, make sure there's no you know, termite damage, anything that could have destroyed it over the years. Any sort of rot on that, you're going to have to replace at least that portion of the wood. And, yeah. it, and if it's like all the pieces are rotted, you may end up looking at a whole board where it's like, we're going to replace all of it. And at that point, it's not an antique door anymore. You've literally built a new door. You have. And and, and there's and, and, and there's nothing wrong with building a new screen door. You can certainly do that. It's just why would you buy an antique door if you're going to replace every part of it? So um, what you want to look out for, if you're in the market for an old door, make sure it's got some character to it that isn't what you can find just standard off the shelf you can buy screen doors at Lowe's mm -hmm. and they're your classic you know design that's got the big window at the top and then the several panes at the bottom sure and they've made doors that look like that forever yeah but if you're getting an old door and it looks like that there's really not a lot of benefit to getting an old door unless it's been given to you or the price was right or sure. something like that old doors Old screen doors especially had a lot of character on them. And that's what you can't replicate. That's what you are having a difficult time finding, you know, the, the gingerbread, if you will. Mm -hmm. And so when we found this door, it was a big old door. It's almost eight feet tall, and it's oh, a little over three feet wide. Mm -hmm. And it had the gingerbread on it. I knew that was my door. Mm -hmm. And I passed up half a dozen other ones antiquing that day. And this one needed the most work, but I thought it was mm -hmm. worth the elbow grease to get it. And I don't have the picture here uh, ready to post, but it was really kind of neat because you even you showed me a picture one night. There's literally a ghost town that uh, is is right across the way from us here, across this valley on this this mountain that we live on, and the town doesn't exist anymore. No, um, but there are remnants of the buildings. And there's, there's photographs of the people and the time and their place and, mm -hmm. and, and everything there. And you said, look at that door. Yeah. And it, <laughs> it looked just like the door that we just got from the antique store mm -hmm. that was on that picture. And it, I mean, sure, it probably wasn't that specific door. No, but... But probably the, the same maker, the same brand, the same wh wherever lot that that thing came from is yeah. probably where this door came from because it's from the same area. It, it was exactly the same door. And mm -hmm. what it did for me was it kind of gave a timetable of how old our door was. Yeah. You know, I kind of knew. I asked the, the guy where I bought it, and he said, oh, I think it's about 100 years old, but I think you would have told me anything if I was going <laughs> to take it home with me that day. It was on the Titanic. Right. So I loved the door, so I brought it home, and then I ended up finding that picture. I was like, okay, this dates it to at least 1914. Mm -hmm. So it's a 103-year-old door, roughly. Mm -hmm. So I took it, replaced all the screen, all the hardware, had to take off some of the rotted trim, replace some of the rotted trim. Mm -hmm. It's still missing one of the corner gingerbread pieces, but, you know, it Close is enough. what it is. It's good <laughs> enough. And it, uh, it got some new life without just dying. And I painted it with chalk paint and coated no. it with polycrylic. And coated it with love. So it's good to go. <laughs> there you go. Uh, so really uh, some ideas there for uh, for working with some old doors. On our next episode of uh, Junkin', and Junkin' with Jenny, we've talked today a lot about uh, peel and stick flooring and, and the many uses for it. Uh, there's a lot of peel and stick products on the market now. There are. And there, there's peel and stick uh, wallpaper. There uh, is peel and stick even uh, tiling now. 
And which, it's, it's not the plastic bubble tile. It's no, real tile. I was really amazed by this. We actually worked with it a little bit mm -hmm. uh, and uh, thoroughly impressed yeah. with how it turned out. So we're going to talk about uh, some of those products on our next episode. And, of course, uh, your letters. Uh, so if you have, a uh, like I said, an object or a, a room you want some feedback on and advice on what to do with it, then uh, send it in to us. Go to junkinwithjenny.com, submit your letter, submit your picture, and we may talk about it on a future episode of Junkin' with Jenny. That wraps up our program for today. Okay. Thank you for, uh, for listening <laughs> to another episode of Junkin' with Jenny. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.